Welcome to one of my favorite topics. When I first came across the idea of love languages, it blew my mind. And what I love about it so much is it's so simple. And after you learn about it, it becomes really obvious. And the reason why it's so powerful is because a, there's a lot of people out there that are trying to be loving to their partners. And it's like the message isn't getting through and they can get really frustrated. And a lot of times conflict happens because somebody's not feeling loved within a relationship. And it's not because they're not being loved. It's because they're not feeling loved. Because when it comes down to it, the feeling of love and feeling that you are loved and also the feeling of loving someone else, it comes from within your own mind. So you might feel like you're loving someone or you might feel love for someone, but if you never express it in any way, they're not gonna know it. So you could feel the love and they won't. That makes sense, right? Well, in the same way, someone else can feel love for you and you might have no clue. And it could be that they're not expressing it, but it could also be that they are expressing it in a way that you don't hear it. So just with that in mind, I want you to make sure that you use the worksheet that's included. It includes a quiz so that you or anybody that you're working with can take the quiz to figure out what love language is the most prominent for them. And it also includes a variety of other questions to really help get to the bottom of what it is that is going to make you feel the most deeply loved fully and completely. And then also, if you're working with your partner, if you're working with a client and you're trying to teach them, it helps you or them figure out what the other party really needs in order to feel loved. So there's a lot of clarity that can be gained by doing the um, experiential and the questions and the quiz. So I'm gonna go over what the love languages are so that you have an understanding of it and then you can take it and go the step further. So the concept of love languages is that there's five different ways that people feel loved. So it can be different types of actions that another person would do that would make you feel really, really loved. And so the concept is that for each of us, <clears throat> there's one or sometimes two of these five that just really impact us more than anything else. So we're all going to have some reaction to all five, but there's going to be something that stands out for you. And one really good way to think about it is that someone might do one of them and you're kind of like, hmm. But then if they do this other one, you're like, wow. Or maybe if someone does one and that's all they ever do, you don't feel loved genuinely. It doesn't do anything for you without having this other one. There might be one that you absolutely need. So just keep that in mind. And so the first love language is called words of affirmation. So mostly this would be verbal, but it could also be writing. You know, some people like send little notes or text messages or whatever it is, but it's affirming the other person. So it can be something that's simple and more obvious, like saying, I love you. But it could also be something like saying thank you. It could be complimenting. It could be praising, saying, oh, you're really good at that, or I love it when you do this, or thank you for taking out the garbage. It's an acknowledgement verbally of the other person. So that's words of affirmation. So the second one is acts of service. So people who really value acts of service, they would value you know, the concept of that actions speak louder than words. So to them, you might say, I love you, but if you're not doing things for them, then they don't feel loved. So a lot of people who have this um, as one of their primaries, they may have had a parent or someone in their life that was always doing things for them as a way of expressing love. So a lot of times we end up looking for love to be expressed in the same way we got used to having it expressed in our households. Whereas other times, we really are looking for it to be expressed in a way that we didn't receive when we were a child. So it can go either way. But acts of service is things like offering to help or doing something for someone else, you know, just out of the kindness of your heart. Um, maybe cooking a meal for someone that might really, really make them feel loved if you cook a meal for them or washing their car for them or, you know, noticing that they're working on something and offering to help. Like these are acts of service, being of service for someone that everybody finds it to be very nice. 
but some people just really, really value it. And when you do that, it fills them up and it makes them feel fantastic. And so the third one is gifts. And gifts seems a little bit obvious. A lot of people enjoy receiving gifts, but it might surprise you, unless you're one of those people, that some people just really don't like it or don't care. And so personally, gifts is the lowest of my five. It's nice when people give me gifts. It makes me feel good. I like to know that somebody's thinking about me, but I wouldn't necessarily say it makes me feel loved. And if if I was receiving gifts from someone, but I wasn't receiving any of the other types of love languages, I would actually feel pretty bad. And um, there's a lot of people who feel the same way, but at the same time, there are many, many people that gift is their, their top one. That, And it's not that they necessarily love to receive gifts, is that they love the idea of someone giving of themselves to them. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical object. It could be any form of giving. But what is important to people who really feel loved when it comes to gifts is that it's the thought that counts. And so you know if people in your life are one of these people when you give them something and they are just absolutely overjoyed. It means it really means something. But if you're giving and giving and giving gifts to somebody and they're not really reacting, it's probably not high in their list. So they're not trying to reject your gift. It's just that they speak a different love language. And the more you can learn about other people's love languages, the more that you can make them feel loved. So the fourth one is called quality time. And so people who are looking for quality time, what matters the most to them and makes them feel loved is feeling like they have somebody's undivided attention. It's knowing that someone genuinely wants to spend one-on-one -on -one time with them. And so if somebody wants quality time, you could have all of the gifts given to you in the world. You could have the other person clean your car for you. They could say, I love you a hundred times a day. But if they're not taking the time to sit down with you, make eye contact, talk to you, turn off the TV, turn off their cell phones, pay attention to you, you're not going to feel loved. And so this one is um, extremely powerful for me. This is one of the ones that's absolutely a must for me, that one-on-one -on -one attention, undivided attention. So the last one, the fifth one, is physical touch. Now, all people, all humans, do require physical touch to a certain degree to feel loved. It's just part of being a human being. But for some people, this is absolutely necessarily, and they want it all the time. So. Just for a little bit of background, if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. When, when you're a little baby and you're held and you're coddled and someone's trying to comfort you and you're not feeling well for one reason or another, that you learn to associate physical touch with love. So it makes a lot of sense. Now, at the same time, there's certain people that don't receive a lot of physical touch as babies. And so that can impact how much they look for it. Um, as an adult in relationships, it could actually make them look for it more or maybe it makes it less important to them because it's not what they associated love with as a baby. But what's interesting is that if a baby is not held and touched and responded to when they're upset and comforted, they can actually die. And that part of the reason why is because when you touch a baby and you hold them, it actually produces endorphins. It's a painkiller. So if they're in pain, and you're holding them, it, it literally physically makes them feel better. And so as adults, we're not that much different. It's like when we're upset, you know, we just want a shoulder to lean on. We want someone to give us a hug. But everybody has a different level of what they're looking for with that. So physical touch, some people immediately think of it as sexual, and it's not necessarily the case, although that is part of it. It can also be hand holding, it could be a hug, it could be a kiss, it could be putting your hand on the other person's knee under the table. It's any type of affection. And that for some people, physical touch is the absolute top of their list. So it doesn't matter what else you do, how many times you say I love you, what else you do for them, what gifts you give, if you're not physically reaching out to them, they're not gonna feel loved. And so wouldn't it be very, very important and very useful to be able to understand what all of these things mean to other people in your life so that you know how to communicate to them that they are loved. Because when you love someone, it's wasted if the other person doesn't know it. Make sense? So whether you're in a relationship 
or if you're single and you're working on figuring out things about yourself right now so that you can understand yourself better going into a relationship and knowing what to look for, or if you're a coach and you're working with other people, this is a great, great tool. I highly recommend it. So again, look at the worksheet. It has a lot more information in there and it has the quiz. So have fun with it. I know I do.